We'll spend some time talking about the theoretical pathways of endodontic and periodontal disease. So there's classically in the endodontic literature uh, five pathways for endodontic disease. First is a primary lesion of endodontic origin. Next is a primary lesion of endodontic origin with a secondary periodontal lesion. Next is a lesion of periodontal origin, that would be a primary lesion. Next would be a primary lesion of periodontal origin with a secondary endodontic lesion. And then the final is a true combined lesion where you have a merging of the endodontic and the periodontal disease processes. So looking at this graphically, and this is about the only way you can really describe and get a sense for it, is when you have primary endodontic disease, you may or may not have drainage through, uh, or necrosis and drainage through uh, the lateral canals. This, in reality, you just don't see this that often clinically. And then when you have a necrosis, and you can only have this when you have complete necrosis of the canal, are you going to have develop, uh, the development of periradicular uh, lesions and possibly an acute alveolar abscess, and then you would have drainage that could be out through the uh, side of the bone, through here, or even up through the periodontal ligament space. Uh, this diagram shows that you also may have, and, and we see this clinically, you have a loss of bone in the furcation uh, because of accessory canals or lateral canals that are at least reported to be in the furcation of, of teeth. Next is the situation where you have primary periodontal disease and secondary anodontic disease. Again, Clinically, we don't seem to see this that frequently. And what this diagram is suggesting is that you have an ingress of bacteria into the canal, uh, both through an accessory canal, through the apex, suggesting that this portion of the canal is necrotic and the rest is vital. I'm not saying this can't happen, but it's actually something we don't tend to see that often clinically. There are so many possibilities uh, with the disease process that you're never absolutely sure what's happening. And of course, you have primary perio because of uh, the loss of attachment, the buildup of plaque and calculus. And then the final is, is really the true combined lesion. This can be diagnostically challenging. Uh, do you have primary perio, primary endo? This is suggesting both. And again, this drawing gives you an idea of what's going on, but it's really not definitive. When you have the combined disease, it can be very uh, devastating. So in this case, which was treated a long time ago, we didn't have a lot of options as far as implants or things that are available today. And so uh, advising the patient that the endo may not help at all, we went ahead and did the endodontic treatment. A classic example of a combined disease process is vertical root fractures, which uh, has been discussed before. And the vertical root fracture is really primary perio and secondary endo because it's the fracture that migrates into uh, the pulp chamber or into the pulp canal, and you have a nidus of infection that's created by the bacteria. Uh, that uh, colonizes within the fracture. An important thing to remember, and we'll, this becomes more important when we're trying to diagnose the two, is that vital pulp tissue acts as a buffer against periapical inflammation. You can't have endodontic, an endodontic lesion, you can't have bone loss secondary to endodontic disease unless you have necrotic tissue in the canal. So periapical destruction rarely occurs when you have a vital pulp. And this is something that's more common than it's not common. Look at this case. Here we have a massive loss of bone. There's probing depths, uh, but during the procedure, this tooth was found to be uh, necrotic. So this is a, a situation where you had primary endodontic disease. Uh, the decision was made to go ahead and treat the tooth. And when you look at this, four years later, you see that there's complete resolution and healing of the bone loss. You can't make a diagnosis based on the radiographic evidence alone. You're, you're just going to be misled. Here's another situation, too, where uh, you have uh, a lot of bone loss, you have vertical bone loss. Does this tooth have to be extracted and replaced with, a, with an implant? And the answer is no. Uh, there was no endodontic disease here 
and just good periodontal treatment, appropriate periodontal treatment, some surgery, and you have resolution of the lesion and you're able to main the tooth, maintain this tooth for a lot longer. Remember, I think there's one thing important to remember, you can always take a tooth out, but it becomes more difficult to put it back in. And certainly having periodontal treatment in a case like this is much more predict, now well, it's probably much more predictable, certainly quicker and easier and less expensive uh, than having implant treatment. Here's another situation where you have a lot of bone loss, uh, you have apical lesions, uh, we have a do endodontic treatment because the tooth was necrotic, and you have resolution. Is it complete healing? No. But this is a tooth that's been in place for 11 years after the root canal was done. You know, that's pretty significant. Uh, I think we should not be at a rush to judgment to extract teeth just because there's a lot of bone loss. When you look at combined lesions, there's a big difference between what's possible and what's predictable. The longer the periodontal disease has been there, the less predictable is the ability to uh, cure that disease process. So the amount of periodontal disease, the degree of periodontal disease present, results in decreased predictability uh, for that tooth. When the disease process has been there for a long, long time, there is a decrease in the ability of that tooth to heal. And in time, the osseous or the bony walls of the periodontal lesion corticalize, and there is a gradual loss of uh, cells in the area to grow new attachment. And here's such an example of that. You can see the corticalization on this part of the periodontal lesion. Uh, I can tell you just from the radiograph, even if the tooth is vital or the tooth is necrotic, that this is probably not going to result in any significant healing because of, of what's occurred here. 